Greetings, this is KYC News. I respectfully request that you stay with me. China's foreign ministry says it is committed to peace and justice in Ukraine. No evidence that a slain official attempted to defect to North Korea, according to Seoul. Sixteen journalists have been detained in Turkey on terrorism allegations. China's foreign ministry says it is committed to peace and justice in Ukraine. On Thursday, China's foreign ministry emphasized that China has always judged the Ukraine issue independently, based on the historical background and merits of the matter, and has always favored peace and justice. Wang Wenbin, a spokeswoman for the Chinese government, made the remarks at a regular press briefing, disputing comments made by a spokesperson for the U.S. Department of State concerning a phone discussion between Chinese and Russian authorities. Nations that side with Vladimir Putin will surely find themselves on the wrong side of history, a representative for the U.S. Department of State said in a statement. Wang said that everyone in the world can see who is on the right side. China actively advocated for a common, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security concept and called for the establishment of a balanced, effective, and sustainable European security architecture when the US broke its promises and continued to promote NATO's eastward expansion, plunging Europe back into conflict and confrontation. When the US put gasoline on the fire of the Ukraine conflict, China actively encouraged peace and dialogue, stressing that the international community should back Russia and Ukraine in their negotiations, Wang continued. He stated that China is adamantly opposed to the politicization, instrumentalization, and weaponization of the global economy, and that the fruits of decades of international economic cooperation should not be squandered, much less let ordinary people suffer as a result. No evidence that a slain official attempted to defect to North Korea, according to Seoul. South Korea's new conservative government said Thursday that there is no evidence that a South Korean officer killed by North Korea near the rival's disputed sea border in 2020 intended to defect to the north, contradicting its predecessor's assessment. The assassination of the fisheries officer sparked a huge domestic schism in South Korea, with conservatives criticizing then-President Moon Jae Liberal In's government of neglecting to respond forcefully to North Korea in the intention of improving relations. South Korean officials stated a week after his death that the man had gambling debts and had swum to the north to resettle. Current President Yoon suk Yeol campaigned on a vow to make sensitive South Korean records about the man's death public. Yoon suk Yeol won the March 9 election on a promise to take a harder stance against North Korean provocations. In a joint press conference on Thursday, Coast Guard and Defense Ministry officials claimed they had uncovered no proof that the officer attempted to defect to North Korea freely. The director of the South Korean Defense Ministry's policy planning section, Yoon Hyun Jin, said it was regrettable to cause public confusion by suspecting the fisheries employee of defecting and failing to adequately disclose pertinent information to the public. Authorities have paused their investigation into the unidentified North Korean soldier who was accused of killing the official, according to senior Coast Guard officer Park Sang-chun, and planned to provide pertinent information about the incident. Separately on Thursday, Yoon's presidential office said that the Moon government will drop its appeal against a court verdict ordering the release of some government records related to the man's death. In September 2020, South Korea accused North Korea of fatally murdering a fisheries official before setting his body on fire, ostensibly in accordance with the country's strict anti-coronavirus efforts. The 47-year-old was reported missing from a government ship patrolling the area for illegal fishing, according to South Korean officials. Moon's government originally condemned the North's actions harshly, but after receiving a North Korean message containing what it claimed was leader Kim Jong-un's remorse for the incident, its criticism progressively cooled. According to a North Korean message obtained by South Korea, the official was shot because he attempted to run after refusing to answer questions, and the thing he was floating on was burned rather than his corpse. Moon's government requested a joint investigation to clarify several differences, but the North refused. The officer was suspected to be attempting to defect because he left his shoes on the ship, put on a life jacket, and boarded a floating device, according to then-South Korean Defense Minister Su Wook during a parliamentary committee hearing at the time. 
Later, the Coast Guard stated he used a life jacket and a floating device to swim against strong currents and expressed his desire to return to North Korea. I can clearly tell you that there is circumstantial evidence that North Korea's military killed one of our nationals and burned his body, Yoon said at the press conference on Thursday. The declaration comes in the wake of North Korea's string of missile and other weapons tests this year, which have heightened tensions. Officials in South Korea also stated that the North had finalized preparations for its first nuclear test in nearly five years. North Korea has not yet replied to the latest South Korean assessment of the dead official, but its state-run Yuraminzo Kiri website called Yoon a idiot and a pro-US flunkyism crazy following reports that he recommended an English name for a new Seoul park on Thursday. North Korea is known for using bombastic and insulting speech to target American, South Korean, and other foreign leaders. Yoon has proposed an audacious strategy to help North Korea's economy if the country abandons its nuclear weapons program. North Korea has already spurned overtures from several of Yoon's predecessors that connected support measures to denuclearization. Parliament receives the third report on reform efforts from the KRG. The Kurdistan Regional Government KRG, has filed a new report to the Kurdistan Parliament on the progress of its reforms. The study covers the reforms that have been implemented so far in several government areas. The financial accounts of the Kurdistan region's first and second support forces have officially been merged with the Ministry of Peshmerga, indicating that they are now receiving government pay and perks. The security change was carried out in collaboration with the US-led coalition fighting ISIS, according to the article. The alliance supports the KRG's efforts to unite and upgrade its Peshmerga forces under a single leadership. The alliance supports the KRG's efforts to unite and upgrade its Peshmerga forces under a single leadership. According to the study, the number of unified brigades has increased from 14 to 19 with the adoption of Reform Law No. 2 of 2020. The ministry now has over 56,000 members of the Peshmerga forces registered. The KRG has been able to cut all illegally obtained governmental salaries and pensions thanks to its biometric system. The 31-page report revealed that financial reforms resulted in more than $685 million being restored to the public coffers. More than $28 million in project loans have been returned to the government. The reform bill was passed by the Kurdistan parliament in 2020 and enacted in July of that year. The administration updates parliamentarians on its efforts on a regular basis in a comprehensive report. Masrur Barzani, the prime minister of the Kurdistan region, has emphasized his cabinet's continuous efforts to implement the reform agenda on multiple occasions, stating that the lengthy process would not yield results overnight. The Iranian president has ordered the production of passenger jets by a local business. According to Razi, Hiza has turned a collection of know-how into capabilities, and we expect this business to manufacture passenger airliners in compliance with all relevant international standards. Hiza is the first Iranian business to manufacture fixed-wing aerial vehicles as well as helicopters. The company is nearing the finish of its developmental phase, with a passenger plane order on the horizon. The Khazar fighter jet and Ababal drone, as well as the Shahid 278, Zafar 300, Shahid 274, and Shahid 285 helicopters, have previously been developed by Hiza. Hiza has also refurbished hovercrafts and created impellers out of composite materials. Simorg training planes and sprinkler aircraft are among the company's other flying products. 16 journalists have been detained in Turkey on terrorism allegations. 16 Turkish journalists associated to pro-Kurdish media sites were remanded in detention pending trial on Thursday, accusing them of being members of a terrorist organization, according to a lawyer. The journalists worked for outlets affiliated with the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party HDP, which is facing a ban in Turkey due to alleged ties to outlawed insurgents fighting the Turkish state for decades. The 16 were arrested on June 8 in Diyarbakir, southeast Turkey, together with four other journalists, on suspicion of being members of the Ban Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK, which Ankara, the EU, and the US have designated as a terrorist group. According to the arrest record, the 16 were suspected of belonging to a terrorist organization on Thursday. They had been imprisoned pending trial, according to a defense counsel. Sirdar Alton, 
co-president of a journalist's association, is one of them. The other four were released on supervised release. Errol Andaraglu, a representative of Reporters Without Borders RSF, in Turkey, described the detentions as an attempt to weaken the Kurdish political class and deprive them of a voice ahead of next year's presidential election in Turkey. Turkey has stated that it intends to launch an operation against Kurdish militants in northern Syria. Following a failed coup attempt against President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in 2016, the government cracked down on the HDP, arresting dozens of current and former members. The crackdown has upset Turkey's Western friends, who have warned that it risks further eroding diplomatic ties with Erdogan's government. Turkey is ranked 149th out of 180 nations in RSF's press freedom ranking for 2022, and is frequently chastised for censoring critical media. Thank you for your time and consideration. Please join our channel as a subscriber.